Hey, trainers, Pope Dad here, along with the uh, Dancing Bear at First Base. KK Chef 128. Great beast in his habitat. Yeah. Today on Pokemon Deck Check, we're going to give out our top 10 Tag Bolt Dark Order Ultra Shiny cards. That's the plan. I think we're just calling the set, uh, well, it's SM9 Tag Bolt, right? Tag mm-hmm. Team Bolt. So. Tag Bolt's like the big thing. Well, I mean, that's the name of it in ja- Japan. They usually change the name up a little bit. But for now, let's just go with Tag Bolt. Y'all know what we're talking about. Yeah. Who are we leveraging here? Ink Gaming, your answer to all your customizable tabletop gaming needs. Yes, they are. And you ready, Dancing Bear? Yep. This is the Dancing Bear's top ten. Number ten, what you got? I got Muscle Pad. So, for your Pokemon that has... Three or more retreat cost, they get plus 50 HP. That seems pretty good. Yeah. Um, I like it a lot because you can attach it to quite a lot of things that have three or more. And it's making... Because originally, like, you can use Heavy Ball. You can grab that out. So in Expanded, you can pair Muscle Pad pretty well in the decks that, are, that have big Pokemon. And you can also use it with Magikarp and well lord tag team and give it 350 hp which that's just insane to have 350 on a basic pokemon that you can just plop it right down i think the newer tag team cards can take more advantage of it like uh like you just pointed out with the magic car well lord but also snorlax and eevee mm-hmm. and uh as well as the venusaur i mean you know Anything with uh, three, four retreat cost can definitely take advantage of the 50 HP. And, like, we're still trying to figure out the right way to play Venusaur. But, I mean, if you go, like, a healing version of it, sort of, then Muscle Pad definitely is the way to go. Um, straight away into Well Lord right? Any mm-hmm. stall deck. Um, like, Regigigas, doesn't it have a super high retreat cost? Yeah, probably, like, four. So, uh... I definitely see Muscle Pad being used in the more stall slash mill variants, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I could see it in some more aggressive builds, too, that uh, want to take advantage of a two-shot game rather than a one-hit KO game. So, yeah, no argument here. Solid. Next, I got Magikarp and Well Lord GX Tag Team. And... I do believe this card is going to be really good, especially with the 350 HP. That's super hard to knock out, and I think really one of the only ways they can beat you if they can, like if they have Nogginatal and can just repre- replenish their energies. But other than that, I think the deck's just going to be super solid. I mean, with the Waylord and Muscle Pad, you're at 350. You know, Glisspod hits for the 120 with first impression. And then even with Choice Band, so it's hitting 150 first impression. Weakness times two, that's 300. But Muscle Pad, you know, you can easily max potion, ace roll it up, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Sceptile does the 130 for two. So you're at 260. So it has to have some sort of Choice Band. So that puts it, say you have Choice Band, so you're at 160, right? And that puts it 320. Not able to one-shot it. Yeah, I mean... Have to have the Lorantis promo also. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot to ask for. So, I see this in Standard, and I see it a lot in Expanded, right? Mm-hmm. Tropical Beach in there with the Waylord. Um, Waylord's already good in Expanded, and having this Waylord with plus 50 more HP... I mean, there's not a lot that's threatening one-hit KOs, you know? Yeah. I mean, the things... And that, that's what Whaler decks kind of struggle the most with, is stuff that can one-shot it. And I don't see anything really without a whole bunch of stuff going on one-shotting it, do you? No. And it's actually higher on my list, so... Um, yeah, I think it's really good. I don't know if it's better in Standard or Expanded. We've tested a few games with it in Standard, and it's Jeez. it's legit, right? Yeah. So, looks good. 
Next I have Starmie, and its attack does 40 damage for colorless. Then you can search for three energies, either water or psychic, and attach to your Pokemon. Well, or any uh, combination. So you grab one water, two psychic. Yeah, that's a, that's really strong. The 40 damage that it does is really good for helping to set up the numbers. And then just grabbing three energies is super strong. And you can run it with like the new Latios and Latios tag team. And then you can set that up like turn two. One turn to evolve. Then it's attack. And then turn two, you got four energies on it ready to attack. Yeah. That's really so far the only deck we've uh, exploited the Starmie in so far yet. But I, th I think it's really, really good. And I think it's another one that's a little higher on my list. And once we figure out all the ways, I'm sure there's water decks that we can play it with and exploit that or even just other psychic variants that we can exploit. But yeah, with the Latios, once you do the turn one Starmie, Latios is set up pretty much for the rest of the game. Because you discard the three... And then we have other ways to get energy in the discard. And then you use the GX tag. It has protection. So just one Starmie attack sets it up. And I'll, and just the 40 damage is just a bonus. You know, it really sets up numbers on these GX Pokemon. Or these tag team Pokemons. So that 40 is very important, right? Yeah. Because a lot of these have uh, 240 and it brings them down to 200. Or Snorlax brings him down to 230. Latios can hit the uh, 240, so it's definitely worth noting the 40 uh, attack is relevant. So, good stuff. Next, I got the new Lycanroc that we have, and its ability, when you evolve, you can discard an energy attached to your opponent's act Pokemon. Then its attack, Acceleroc, for a fighting and two colorless, it does 120. Then it's GX attack does 30 times the number of energies in your opponent's discard pile. And uh, double colorless counts as two. So something to note there on the uh, GX attack. Okay. I thought it was just basic. Okay. No, it's all energy. And DC is what counts as two. Okay. Um, wow. I, I'm s it's one of the cards I'm most interested in building around. And... I'm not a fan of the Persian. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the Persian that like uh, the Japanese players are using or playing. So I've been testing it with like just a straight Zoroark with uh, dangerous uh, or bloodthirsty eyes and this one in Zoroark. And then I've tried it with Gengar. Uh, I'm trying all sorts of different ways to play it. I think it's really good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um,. It'd probably be higher if I had a set. If I, I, I would put it higher on my list if I had a set deck I know uh, it's going to be solid in. And right now, I just I don't have that answer. So, Number six, Eevee and Snorlax Tag Team GX. Its first attack is attaching energy from your hand onto a Pokemon. And all of his attacks are colorless. And it's got 270 HP. And then at second attack, for four colorless energies, it does 120. And if your opponent's Pokemon is a evolution, it does 120 more damage. And then it's GX attack for four colorless, does 120. And if you have more, I think, draw to you have 10 cards in hand. Yeah, I think it's like Drampus. Yep. And so, the reason why I like this card so much is the colorless attacks. So you can put this in a whole bunch of variety of decks. I think it's most best in Malamar because you can help counter each other's weaknesses. So Malamar is weak to uh, Zork, and if you have four energies attack, then you can just run right over the Zorks, hitting them for 240, and you can make good prize exchanges with it. But if you play against something like Buzzwall, then you have the Malamars that you can use to just run over the buzz walls with the weakness. So this is where muscle pad would come in key in that matchup you're talking about. Because you're putting Zark from where these tag teams are going to be the strongest 
is a four for three price trade. And so if Snorlax can take a hint, uh, take a hit, or even two hits, can you imagine that? Two hits from a right is beating. He can take two hits from a right. Speed. Right, so. And if they don't have the choice ban, then it's a three hit. That's what I'm saying. So, very, very important. And, yeah, I mean, I can see its own deck with the Starmie. Um, Malamar, we've been testing in Malamar, and it's been solid, yeah. So, I think it's good. Next, I have Kabutops. And this isn't for standard, it's for expanded with uh, maxis. So you can use maxis, kind of run it like Blastoise. And once you get to Kabutops, there's no supporters. And if they can't play any supporters, and it's like turn one, that's no elm. And then it can help you set up for his attack for DCE, where you can use strong energy or regular. And you can actually hit pretty hard with it. Um, I left it off my top 10 because I'm fully anticipating Maxis being banned before this is legal to play. I think the ban hammer will come down on Maxis. And depending on how Archies does this weekend in Anaheim, we may just see both Archies and Maxis banned. Which is unfortunate because those are, you know, uh, you know problematic um they're unique cards maybe they just ban kabutops uh, like they did archaeops maybe they go that route and leave maxis still available uh but if, if they don't ban maxi or kabutops for a expanded regional then all of a sudden this is like number one right you can't fab off their dce they're safe they can't Guzma around it. Uh, no Elm, no nothing on turn one. It's like the ultimate lockout deck, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's super good, but I don't I don't see them allowing that, right? Who knows? I and mean, then it comes to whoever gets their Kabutops out first is probably basically going to win. I, mean, I, I left it off my list because I'm... I think uh, Maxis will be banned, or Kabutops itself will be banned. So you know, there's a hot chance. All right, all right. For number four, I got Viridian Forest. The stadium. You may discard a card in your hand. If you do, search for a basic energy, and then put it into your hand. I mean, it's a great card. You do a lot of thinning. You can get an energy when you need it, so there's no missing an energy per turn. I don't really see any drawbacks to the stadium except for your opponent can use it also. I'll go more in detail on uh, my list on it. But, um... You love this card. Yes. So, yeah, we can... I'll go over it in great detail in mine. Next, I have Jolteon GX. And his first attack is like Jet Punch. It does 30 to the active... 30 to a bench Pokemon for just a electric energy. Then a second attack hits for a solid 110. Then its GX attack hits for 110 and then prevent all damage and all effects of attacks done to this Pokemon. So overall, it's it's a good card. You can set up numbers with the 30 and 30. You can hit for a solid 110. You have electro powers to hit even higher, especially with choice band and stuff like that. And even the Japanese players are playing it, and it's going rampage over there. We have a, a Jolteon deck built, and I think we featured it against Waylord, right? And mm -hmm. that's a bad matchup, but you were still able to see, you know, how solid Jolteon is as an attacker. Uh, the 110 plus Choice Band plus the Electro Powers get you there. And with the stadium, then, you know, you're looking at one energy attack or even uh, the electric punch. You know, that's a free attack with the stadium. I mean, then you pair it up with uh, Dancing Bears number one, then you can kind of cover your buzz wall weakness. So it works out pretty nice like that, right? Yeah. It also has 
Did I already say it has free retreat? Because it's got free retreat. Free retreat. That's <laughs> really awesome. And, the you know, Eevee. that pairs perfectly with Dance Bears number one. You also got Eevee, which you can just evolve, turn one, and start going for the 30 and 30. Setting up numbers. Electric's needed a Pokemon like this. I'm, it's very exciting that they finally are getting the love because it's been so long since we had a really, really good attacker. I mean, you had to go back to Manetric, you know. I think the good one was the Jolteon <clears throat> EX that had like 160 HP and went for like $70 each. But even that, it was like, that was more of just a tech, not an actual deck built around it, so. Yeah. Jolteon's really good, folks. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for it. Next, I have Jirachi, and his ability, once per turn, you may look at the top five cards of your deck, and you may take one trainer card that you see there and put it into your hand, but this Pokemon is now asleep. So, I mean, you put it up into the active, you look at the top five, you get one free card, and then you shuffle your deck again, and then you can get another fresh five cards if you use another ability. And it pairs, pairs up nicely when something gets knocked out, you put it up, you put a skateboard on it, and then it gets free retreat because of its one retreat cost. I mean... It fits in nicely in your number one and number three decks. And those are kind of two separate, but you can also tech in Zapdos in the Jolteon deck. But I think you're going to start seeing Jirachi pop up in Shrine decks, in even Malamar decks that like the Gas Can that run for Skateboard. Fits in nicely there. Uh, I, th I think it's a really good tech that you can put in to... Any deck that already runs a skateboard, I would definitely just go ahead and take it in. Because you're basically using Gallade's ability to look at your top five. And rather than putting putting them in order, you just go ahead and grab whatever you want, trainer-wise, mm -hmm. out of those five. That's really good. And when you build a deck to where, uh, with the Zapdos, where you can just skateboard and then play like a Switch, get another Drachi in there or a skateboard and then get him into the uh on the bench and zap does in the active uh yeah drachi's really good folks i like how if you start with him then that's just like eight cards that you get in your hand because you can use the ability and that's just one free card yeah i agree i think i think it's really good and um we're only seeing it in playing like in Japan, in Zapdos and Jolteon variants, but I, I think I think Shrine decks could make a comeback with him. You know, no longer you need the Macargo. I mean, you can still play Macargo and Oranguru with him or whatever, but you may not need the Oranguru you now. Just play Smooth Over to get that Guzma on top. You know, or whatever. So, I, th I think Jirachi's really good. Solid number two. Then, for number one, I got Zapdos. I have Zapdos because, I mean, 10 damage, and if it goes from the bench to the active, 70 more. So, 80 damage. And then you got the Electro Powers. You can run Jirachi, Macargo, Oranguru, and then you can just hit hard for just one energy on a one prize attacker, and it has resistance to fighting. Over in Japan, I thought Jolteon was running Rampage this it's just slaughtering the meta. I'll never forget the Dancing Bear's face. Uh, we built this deck, what, back around Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. we, we built. We, that's how long we've been playing Zapdos. We built it around Thanksgiving, and I remember your face the first time I knocked out Tapu Lele with it. And you were like, what? Really? I just put... I was going to ace roll with Tapu Lele up. I didn't think he was going to get three Electro Powers and Choice Band and all that. But I was able to have, like, Jirachi grab an Electro Power. And this was... Switch, do another Jirachi, grab another Electro Power, and then switch into the... or retreat into the Zapdos. And this was, like, turn two. Yeah. 
It's it's awesome, folks. I mean, but w- without the Jirachi, Zapdos doesn't happen. Okay. Um, yeah, you could probably maybe play with like Tapu Koko or something like that with uh, switching cards or something like that. But the the Jirachi is the backbone of the uh, the Zapdos. Zapdos is the arms and legs, the limbs. Jirachi's the heartbeat of the deck. So what does that make McCargo? cargo? It's like the liver or something. <laughs> <laughs> your body still can't function without your liver. Um, great stuff. Zapdos, 10 and 70 more, so 80. Uh, note, it's weak to electric. So, I mean, it turns into an interesting mirror match since they're both kind of weak to each other, you know, in a mirror match. I think that's when Jolteon gets that, really good because yeah, for the electric match. plus power, one shot in thirty. Yeah, and it is kind of hard for Zapdos to reach two hundred too. Oh, it can reach one seventy just fine though. Yep, because you got the eighty choice band, then a couple electro powers, and you're there. You're there at one seventy two electro powers and a choice band. It's good stuff. It's hard to argue. Um takes three electro powers to one shot Jolteon with a choice band. I think what you're seeing in the Dancing Bears list is the Jolteon deck has been dominating the format in Japan. Zapdos slash Jirachi has been dominating Japan. And then Jirachi has been in both of those one and three decks. So, I think it's good. So, I mean, you can honestly make the argument Jirachi's number one. Since he's kind of uh, boosting Jolteon decks and Zapdos decks. So, yeah. Good stuff. Pokedads. Number 10, I got Latios and Latios. Um, at first, I wasn't very impressed with it. You know, Water, Psychic, Psychic, Colorless, 240. That's nice. That's one shot and everything. But you have to discard three. Then I started thinking, is that better or Ultra Necrozma? Both require either metal or water, so some weird type of energy plus the generic uh, psychic. So at first you're thinking, oh, Malamar, Malamar, Malamar. Then you figure out, no, there's this card, Starmie, that completely sets up Latios. So you take two or knock out a tag team, there's three prizes, right? The next turn you add another energy and you do the GX tag, pull all those energy from the discard and set up a new Latios, Latios on the bench. And then all of a sudden you hit another tag team or another two prizes or something. So I was worried it's gonna take a lot to set this up or to stream attacks, but it's GX attack. It's so good. It is the GX attack. I mean, you know, we know how good Yellow Monkeys GX attack is, but now it's like Yellow Monkeys and Dusk Mane. Yeah, because it gets the protection. Yeah, and it, and the it works out perfectly as long as you have an attach for turn that you get the bonus effect of the GX attack, and you get to set up it and another Latios whenever you do the GX attack. Yeah. So. That's what we were saying. One Starmie hit to get three. Plus, uh, there's ways to get attachment each turn for sure. You're set. And that's 40 damage already on it to help hit the numbers. And where we went back and forth on Ultra Necrozma versus this is um, Nine Tails, you know, hits for 70, right? And then Choice Bands hits for 100. So it one shots Ultra Necrozma, right? Mm-hmm. Nine Tails is seeing play everywhere, so that's not out of the ordinary to see a choice man on Nine Tails hundred. Well, Nine Tails can't get there with the uh, choice band on Latios. Yeah, and so that that was the kind of difference maker, in our opinion, right? Mm-hmm. That and the GX, and then Gardevoir can't really get there because you discard three energies, so that leaves one on it. That's way too much energy. And, and you can just one shot them. And it can one shot the Gardevoir. So it's number ten, but I think it could be higher. 
But uh, as of right now, we're liking it, right? Yeah, I definitely do like the deck. Yeah, I do too. Um, number nine, I've got the Coco Prism Star. Um, it's going to see play in the Jolteon decks. It's going to see play in the Zapdos deck. And a new deck that we just uh, built and have been testing. You want to talk about it? Okay, so it's Zekrom Pikachu. And so you run a couple energy switch in it. And pretty much on turn two, you can power up Zekrom and Pikachu and then hit for 150. And then you draw three energies from your deck and attach it onto another one or the same one. And then you prepare for a GX attack. It's a very cool concept. Um, it's on our honorable mention list, so we'll do more detail. But there's not just uh, play it with Magnezone, right? Yeah. Because that's initially, as soon as everyone saw the card, oh, just play it with Magnezone. Um, but it's yeah, with- you can do it. You can do it with Magnezone, and we built a solid list, and it works. But there's actually a more consistent and more aggressive way to play it, right? Yeah. So we'll talk about that when we get to the honorable mentions. And it's better because you can have quite a lot of text for the matchups that you want. Yep, absolutely. So, number eight. Uh, came kind of out of nowhere for me, right? You two? Yeah. Vaporeon GX. Okay. Water has been needing an efficient way to deal with Party Bloom, right? Mm-hmm. Folks, this is it. Three waters... 40, and then 30 more for each water, right? Yeah. So you immediately hit 160, right? Or 130. 130. So you one-shot the Naganatals, and then you one-shot the Party Blooms, right? And the Baby Bows. And you're weak to metal, right? Nope. No, oh, you're weak grass. to grass. I'm sorry, grass. I'm sorry, I was thinking of uh, Arctic. Um, then you have the ability... That lets you heal 30 damage uh, from the water Pokemon in the active. So if you have two or three set up, you can, you know, heal 90 damage. Um, Japan's playing it more like a, a healing type Vaporeon deck. Yeah. Well, we have a more aggressive with Quagsire uh, along Nine. with Glaceon, too. Mm-hmm. You know. Cool. Glaceon's been needing the right partner, too, and for the longest time, everyone thought it was Zorark, but mm, no. no. That, that didn't really work out. No, with the f- four Eevees, it gives you the option. If you're against like a Zorark ability-dependent deck, you go straight into Glaceon. Or if and, you're going first. And then you pair it with Naginatal and Quagsire to move waters out of the energy, and we have a ton of ways. Remember how, whenever we did some testing videos, I always felt like, I never can get water into the discard. Problem solved with my with one of the other cards on here. Problem solved perfectly. And you know, this is a guy you could pair up with Starmie too. Mm-hmm. That's definitely an option. We haven't explored that yet. The uh, specifically water aspect of Starmie. So that's something to keep in mind too. But the Vaporeon, the GX attack is awesome. One water heal. All damage from all of your water Pokemon. So if you have two of these little guys, you know, I I can see why the Japanese version would play more like healing to withstand two shots. So I like the Quagsire and Nogginado list that we have right now. It is, it's solid. It's so much fun to play too, folks. Uh, we'll try to showcase that deck. Um, we're still in the process of tweaking it and dialing it in because... My only concern is if people know the matchup, they know to just target down Quagsire. So that still has me concerned a little bit. So we're still kind of in the uh, tweaking and uh, getting to the final list. So that's where we're at on that. But we will be showcasing it because it is a lot of fun. It's really good. Moving along to number seven, we talked quickly about, uh, I think you added what, number six on your list? I had it somewhere. Six or seven? Seven. Same spot. Um, don't really know the best way to play it. Don't know the best partner. I'm not 100% confident with Parisian. 
I think Zorark along with Bloodthirsty Eyes could be the best way. So it's good. We just haven't found the best way to play it. It could even be in Buzzwall, honestly, and just go for Accelerock for your 120 and then Diancie 140, then Choice Band uh, 170. <clears throat> then if you do a couple jet punches, that's 200. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and it's got a super good GX attack. I mean, you could do some sort of split in Buzzwall Lycan Rock, you know. Uh, or, you know, maybe we're all wrong and it needs to be in like a Sylveon based deck. That's, I mean, we don't know yet. We don't know. We have tip, uh, we're at the tip of the iceberg on uh, how to play it. So, And that goes along with my number six card, Starmie. We do not, we, we know for sure pairing it up with Latios and Latias is awesome. Latias? Latias. Latias and Latios, whatever. Yeah. L and L. We'll just go with L and L. Teaming it up with L and L is 100% legit. It's ready for play immediately day one, right? Yep. But like I said, I mean, there could be something with the water also. There's a little Lapras that has a decent attack. Um, what, 10 and then 30 and 30? 30 and 30. No, 30 for each water energy attached to it. So, I mean, there could be something there. So, uh, I think it has a lot of potential, right? It does. So, won't harp on it too much. I think Starmie's really good. And then the Forney damage is just, like, really good. Jolteon, we already talked about it quite a bit. Uh, Electric's been needing an attacker like this. Uh, 30 and 30 is awesome. We know how good it is at Buzzwall. Then by the time you had Choice Band, Electro Powers, uh, you know, I'm just waiting for them to release some sort of Prism card that, that's like Diancie for Electric that automatically boosts 20. And then all of a sudden, Electro, uh, Jolteon's the new Buzzwall, and everyone's yelling for the band hammer on that, you know? Well, just play Buzzwall. Yeah, so. And Free Retreat. Good gosh. Great card. Top four. <clears throat> Zapdos, we already talked great detail about that. Uh, solid deck we've been playing since Thanksgiving. We put it together and have been playing it, refining the list. We'll showcase it as well pretty soon. Uh, I don't feel like there's anything else more to talk about. It's just a good card. Uh, one prize attacker, one energy attachment. You know, one energy attachment doing... A nice, cool 80. You know, yeah, it's not first impression damage-wise, but two prizes versus one. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the damage modifiers, so. Um, Magikarp, Waylord. I already talked quite a bit about this. It immediately sees play from day one. I don't see anything that legit uh, threatens it. I think Blaziphon is the only thing with Naginatal. Blaziphon might be the only uh, the only counter threat. Yeah. Um, I wonder how Get Lost would do with the Gareth Rig to just remove their fires from the discard pile or something like that. Uh, we'll bring you that matchup next. I promise. We, we will find out for you how Wellord and Magikarp pair up against Party Bloom. Okay? Don't worry, I'll play Wellord for you. That's fine. I'll play Party Bloom. So we will find that answer out because aside from uh, Sceptile having all the uh, Lorantis and all that, right? Is there anything that really threatens it? No. And Expanded, do you see anything that's being played that threatens it? No. I don't either. Zork deck, this, this is going to demolish any Zork variant, right? Five of the DCE and a max potion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's really good. And then add in Tropical Beach. It's that much better, right? Steven's decision. All that stuff. Yeah. So, definitely, definitely good from day one that it's uh, legal to play. 
Drachi, we talked about it a lot. Uh, I had it higher than the Dancing Bear because... Um, you don't have it higher? We have it in the same place. Well, I had it above the Zapdos and Jolteon, mm. whereas you had it above the just the Jolteon. And that's uh, only because without Drachi, I don't think Zapdos works, and I don't think the Jolteon deck's as good as it is. And that's why I put it a little bit higher. And I think Jolteon's going to fit into more uh, one prize based attack decks like the shrine decks of old and stuff so that's why I have it a little bit higher okay number one Viridian Forest folks this card is awesome I'm telling you there's a I have to go back to my magic roots here <laughs> go on to the store here there's a reason why almost every single magic player plays what's called fetch fetch lands. You put it into play, you sacrifice it, and then you go and grab a underground sea or a tundra or sorry, I'm using terms, but you go and grab a whole nother land and put it into play. Okay? Land is like energy. So you're able to completely thin the deck. You're able to grab an energy exactly the moment you need it. Okay? When you play this in the water decks or any Naganatal based variant, it just... It seems overpowered, right? The card is super good in place of harm. In Party Balloon... Plug it in. It is legit. It's all that. Discard and fire to grab another fire. And then maybe mysterious that fire away. And all of a sudden you have two that you can pull in with Naganatal. You're able to ramp up your energy with Naganatal that much faster. And you're thinning to where... If you get hit with a Marsh Shadow Let Loose or a Judge or something like that, you have the thinning aspect, so you're more likely to get something useful rather than just an, an energy that you don't need. Because I know I can just go grab one with the Forest. Malamar decks. So good in Malamar decks. So good in Electric decks. Based around Yellow Monkey or the Tapu Koko Prism Star. The Zekron Pikachu. Zekron Pikachu. It accelerates with the Tapu Koko Prism. Pull them back. Or Yellow Monkey to do that. Like a Rayquaza Dex. Wow. I mean, I don't know what more I can say. Uh, it's probably a surprise that it's number one. But once... You play the card. You can run it in like anything. We've already fitted in almost like every single deck back there. And it works. It's awesome. It is so, so, so good. But I think we have a video of Party Balloon. And you'll see. Just, you know, I'm able to hit what Gengar had 240. I'm able to easily get 250. Or you were. I like yeah. nothing. And nothing. Just discard a fire, grab another fire. You know, ultra ball those fires away. I mean, it just, it's awesome. It, it really is. So, uh, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. What we leave out? Grab you one. Uh, I'll just start at the top with Dragon Knight. Oh. Oh, uh, we kind of put an honorable mention because its ability. You can search for a supporter card and put it into your hand. So, we were thinking, is this better than Swampert? If you can either do it in Gardevoir, would you rather have Dragonite or Swampert? And when we thought about it, we would just rather have Swampert because you can use its attack also. And it's more efficient than using Dragonite's attack for just 120. So, with that super boost, boost energy, uh, I'd rather attach it to Swampert than Dragonite. I think it's deck dependent, but that, that is kind of the argument we were looking at is, would we rather this be a Swampert or a Dragonite? And I think at the end of the day, we'd most of the time rather it be a Swampert, right? 
Yeah. It attacks better, like the dancing bear said. And you also do thinning. I mean, this this, this lets you grab a supporter, but I mean in like that uh magnerium magnanium deck, magnanium deck where you can just Greninja, you're wanting to hit boost energy. So Dragonite doesn't get you the boost energy, so you'd need the Swampert to draw into it. Yeah. So, I think I, it could be useful in something. Somebody's it's going to see play, but I don't know. I'm not seeing it. what deck. Next we have Gengar and Mimikyu Tag Bolt GX Tag Team, not Tag Bolt. Hmm. It, it, it's not even the dark weakness that concerns me. It's, uh, we just don't know the best partner. I mean, I think we, we tried it with Lycanroc, thinking, okay, we'll, we'll kind of get rid of their energies and they'll be kind of stuck with, uh, trainers and stuff in their hand because they won't be able to attack or do much, you know? And that would boost up the damage 50 times, but it's two psychic attachments, um, the GX, I think, is really good. Uh, one Psychic, and then if you have one more, you know, you can have both players draw to seven, then uh, no cards whatsoever can be played from your opponent's hand during the next turn. So I don't like giving them extra cards, but it's trying to ramp you up for the first attack so you can do uh, get a big KO, you know? Yeah. Very disappointing when... Uh, I did it to the Dancing Bear and only hit for 150 on Party Balloon. So I couldn't even one-shot it. Um, yeah. And then, I think the best part was when I had like four cards in hand. And he looked at them and it was just two beast rings in hand. And <laughs> that's when you should know your yeah, own fate right I there. Just, I think it's good. I just We don't know the best partner. We've tried it with Lycanroc, like I said. Maybe Sableye with Limitation. And then I was thinking uh, we could possibly play it with Amistar with the item lock. But Amistar's ability goes to crap once you have a full bench. And in order to do something like that, we're looking at you need Vulpix, Ninetales to grab the unidentified fossils. And then so right away you're at, you know, at least two, three spots. Maybe you have a backup attack or four spots. So... At that point, the item lock's easily played around by your opponent. So, as of right now, we don't know the best partner. I'm going to tinker some more with it with the uh, Lycanroc. But I don't know. Maybe it was just a bad matchup with uh, Party Balloon. But right now, we have to go forward with the uh, mindset that if we can't beat Party Balloon, trash. I kind of just don't like the deck. I think it's just too risky to hit for 50, look at their hand, and hope that your opponent didn't, like, discard something with Viridian Forest, just discard yeah. a trainer, grab an energy. So that's what you did to keep from getting one shot, is you discarded a Lily to grab a fire, and then I hit, and you only had three in hand, so that was 150. So, I mean, your opponents can play around it. There's a reason why... The Grass Trevenant never really saw play with Poltergeist because it had yeah. a similar attack. So, um, yes. I think the Item Lock might be your best way, but like I said, they can just control their bench. I mean, don't put down too much. I don't know. I don't. I, if you know the best way to play Gengar, or if you have a an idea in mind, please let us know in the comments. On your thoughts on how to play it. So, next we have Articuno, and its ability is while it's active, they can't touch your water Pokemon with Guzma or any other trainer cards. Any other supporters, they could still like escape rope and stuff, but no like supporter, no Lysander, no Guzma. Okay. And its attack does 70 move two waters from this Pokemon to a base, or not a basic, but a bench Pokemon. Right, then you just use your Quagsire to move back up. And I tried this in the Vaporeon deck to try to protect Quagsire because the Dancing Bear's a butthead like that. He just targets down my Quagsires. 
So I, I tried him, and then because you're only playing a one-up tech, you can't always get him. You can't always get him in the active. And then even then, you're only doing 70. So eventually, they're going to find some way around it or just knock it out. And then so it's good in theory, but uh, I haven't had success with it in the deck so far. So that's why it's just an honorable mention. Next, uh, it's Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX. I don't like the card. I think it's very underwhelming with its attack for four energies. It's only 150. When you can just use Latios and Latios for its four energies, you can hit for 240. Its GX attack is actually pretty good. Two grass, two colorless. And if it has any more... Oh, another grass. A third grass. It has another grass. I thought it was just another. Anything. No, it's a, it's a third grass. Okay. Uh, you can hit for 180 and then shuffle your discard pile into your deck and heal all damage from Venusaur and Celebi. This is another one like Gengar. Uh, we tried it with Vikable and I mean. It, it set up perfect. It did. It, it set just, up a- absolutely amazing, but. It At the end of the day, you're doing 150, choice band 180. So if you're against these other tag teams, you have to two-shot them regardless. And some of them can just one-shot you. Like uh, what you did, you just poked into it with the Starmie <laughs> to put it to 230. And then you went in with the... Uh, I mean, Maybe we could try it with uh, the Stadium that prevents 30 damage. And then you could try Muscle Pad. So, I mean, you could try... There, the ways we've thought of is Vikavolt, Baby Venusaur, and then with, like, Septal, right? Mm-hmm. Or just... Uh, and I've even thought about the... Around the first attack. Poison, Burned, Confused. And then... Boosting that damage up with like the new parasite that does two damage counter survivor that adds poison damage And I'm sure there's something that adds more burn damage that you could pair it up with. I just haven't looked all into the uh, Old okay. cards. I don't know if there's something for burn so, I think there's like Blaziken, but But it, that's it's stage two at the end of the day. It's weak to fire, right? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day last I checked there was like 50 in the top 64 party balloons. There was like 50 party balloons in the top 64, some crap like that. Yeah. So until party balloon gets unpopular, I would throw Venusaur in the binder. Right? Yep. Sorry, that's the way it is. And four energy for 150 just seems underwhelming when we could just do Sceptiles for two grass, 130, right? Snorlax for four energies. Two ten. Yeah, or two two hundred forty. On a I mean it's disappointing. Mm-hmm. Grass is gonna need some help. I even with it four energies for one fifty folks. I mean, why aren't we just playing Raquaza or Bulu? I mean three energies, two ten. At least Bulu, it takes more energy to one-shot it with Party Balloon, right? Mm-hmm. It takes four energies to knock out Bulu, where this is only three fire energies. So Yeah, that's true. Two for three. So, I mean, it's something to think about. I mean, I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you have an idea of how to play it. Um, other than Other than the healing route... Of uh, like what the Japanese players have used, where you use the grass prism stadium to heal sixty, and then use the other one that reduces damage by thirty and muscle pad. So if you have something other than the healing route, we would like to know. So next fairy charm for Ultra Beast. Uh, I mean, it's a good card, especially for nine tails and stuff. Just attach it, you get prevention, pre- prevent quite a lot of damage from, because there's 
a lot of Ultra Beast. A lot of good ones. You now auto win Blaze Fun. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing they can do about it. I mean, when you Nine Tails far it, Nagan Adel can't touch you. Um, your most difficult matchup is Buzzwall. Because they can just snipe off your Ralts and stuff. You now auto win that. So. And then you add in another card from our honorable mention. Gardevoir's going to make a comeback, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have all these tag teams that have all this energy. Yeah, like four. Or Zekrom or Venusaur that's going to have all this energy attached. Gardevoir's going to eat their lunch, right? Except for like Latios and Latios where they discard yeah. it and can set it up pretty easily. Yep, but even then it's tough for Gardevoir to hit the weak, uh, the weakness, and they easily one shot you. Mm-hmm. So there's a very good balance there. So yeah, but Paratron, yeah, I think it's good. I think Gardevoir will make a comeback. So looks good. Next, Jasmine. This isn't really a standard card, but an expanded one, and both are right beside each other. The new Bronzor, where if you go first, actually you can talk about all three of those right there in that corner. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm just going to go Jasmine. If it's your first turn, search for five metal Pokemon. If you go and second if you go yeah. second on your first turn. Search for five. And then Bronzor, if, it's, if you're going second, then you can evolve it immediately as you put it down or if it's already in play. So that's just Bronzong's right there. Then you can use it with Bisharp to set up all your pieces. I don't know what the basic one's called, but you can grab all those. Yeah, you can grab any five. I can see this in Metagross. This is going to be really good in Metagross. It's going to be really good in any sort of expanded Bronzong Metal Links deck. Um, We like the Bisharp Shrine deck that we've made. We'll (laughs) showcase it soon. Uh, It's based around Bisharp with the 120 if it has no damage on it. So it can easily one-shot the Ninetales. It's going to... Puts a major hurt on uh, Gardevoir that we just talked about. So, yeah. Metal's slowly starting to come in a good spot right now, right? Yeah. So, something to keep in mind. Jasmine really, really helps the decks. Like I said, Metagross. And, uh, still weak to fire, folks. Or even your Doll Blade. Yeah, Doll Blade, you get those set up. But, like I said, at the end of the day, they're still kind of weak to fire. Yeah. I mean, so, they're little basics. They are. Uh, and, you know, that's been Party Glenn's uh, struggle to deal with uh, squishies. One prize attack. Yes. Yeah, so. Next is Ninetales and Ninetales. The fairy one is the same as Hoopa's, prevent all damage done by EX and GX. And then its attack does 80 damage for two colorless and a fairy energy. And then. The other nine tails, the non alolan its ability you may discard two fire energies, and if you do, it's a Lysander, and it's attack for one fire and two colorless ninety. Goes great in party balloon. You don't have to waste your supporter, your Guzma. And you can run one Ditto to evolve into it or Nonganatal. Yep. So definitely a one of tech in the party balloon. We like it. Uh the fairy. Ninetales is very interesting because uh, the problem with the water Ninetales that like that is two you attachments. Two, two attachments. This was Secret Spring and you're already running DCE and all that. It uh, gets powered up pretty quick, right? And, you know, it's still putting some hurt on uh, the Latios and Latios, right? So, 80 choice band. That's 220. It did so, like 10 more, one shot. So that looks good there. So uh, both of these should see play, right? Yeah. Not not a ton. I'm talking like a, a one of tech in Party Balloon and a one of tech in Gardevoir, right? Right. So, all right, looks good. Next, Zekrom and Pikachu Tag Team GX. Uh, this is a good card. It, you can go really aggro with it. If you run like a tap of cocoa and other stuff, turn two, you can be hitting for 150. Or you can run it with uh, Magnuson, which, I mean, it's still good, but it's a stage two. Um, 
it just misses. This would probably be number 11 for me in my list. Yeah. Uh, we came up with a list that's like a turbo version that doesn't use Magnazone. It just used Cocoa Prism, energy switches, Yellow Monkey to move around, and it's solely based on the first attack. Okay? The three lightning, 150, and then search for three. So once you do that attack once, you're set up the rest of the game. And if uh, late game, you we have an energy recycler, or we can always use Yellow Monkey's GX tech. But essentially, you base the deck around the first attack. But if you see an opportunity to hit uh, Lele or something on the bench, plus take a knockout of something big in the active with Choice Band or Electro Powers, then you do that to just seal the game up. Yeah. Um, it's working better than Magna Zone. Or to stay out of Beast Ring range to take four prizes. Just... And it's uh, it's at that three retreat cost, so if you want to go to wear Muscle Pad, mm -hmm. then you kind of stay out of Buzzwall's range and all that sort of stuff. So something to think about there. And you can still one-shot stuff like Party Balloon with Muscle Pad because you can use the Electro Powers. Yeah, we've got the four Electro Powers plus three Choice Bands. Our, our deck list is specifically built around the first attack, folks. The GX attack is only there if you see an opening that you can just, boom, four prizes. So it, it's built, it demolishes Party Balloon, right? It yeah, absolutely it destroys Party Balloon. Because you get that first attack, 150, plus the 30 choice band, or one Electro Power, two prizes. Now, if they set up a Lele on the bench, which they probably will with Party Balloon, they're going to have a Lele, then they'll put up another Party Balloon in the active. Well, you already one-shot it with the 200, and then the Lele. Game over. So, very, 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 very effective against Party Balloon. I love that matchup, right? Yeah. You also have energy switch. So, say you got three on the active and then three on the bench one. Then if you do the stadium, energy switch, attach, return, then GX attack. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's really good. I'm super excited to showcase our turbo list because of how strong and how good. And like I said, it, it it's number 11 for me on our top 10, but I mean, I think it could creep up a couple spots. You know, I'm just getting excited just talking about it because I mean, it's it's good. Yeah. And it is a party balloon popper. <laughs> Last card, Dancing Bear. Muck. Muck. Where does this purple goop fit into everything? Has the ability that, uh, you, your uh, opponent's active Pokemon stays poisoned even if they evolve or devolve. I wish it was even if they move to the bench. You know, there's a... Crazy. There's a stadium that's like this, uh, Sea of Nothingness, that keeps special conditions on. And again, I wish it was even if they move it, move it to the bench, it still stays, you know, the special conditions still stick. Yeah. But it does 40 and then two more for uh, in between turns rather than just the one. And why we have it on here is, why do we have it on here? I think there's something with him and Survivors and possibly Shuckle GX, you know, or no? Sure. I think, I think there's going to be some crazy combo eventually. Maybe not when this set comes out, but maybe further down the line. He's going to be a relevant attacker into the... and. I was thinking maybe like uh, expanded. You have Verbank and Hypnotize with Laser and stuff like that. Plus him, you know, now you're adding how much with the Verbank? Plus two. 
So you're adding plus four for damage or poison in between turns. And then survivors in between. I mean, I don't know. He may not be good now, but I think eventually he will be. If some more uh, poison modifiers come out, even another stadium like Burbank, then he definitely skyrockets, right? Yeah. If we ever see a stadium similar. And you know, something you could play possibly with Shrine of Punishment, you know? So, something to think about. Yeah. Um, I think there's another honorable mention, the Parasect, that does uh, two damage for Confusion, right? No, I don't like it. Dance Bear doesn't like it, but I think it could be good with Espeon's first attack, 30, they're confused, and, or like Venusaur, you know, that that's something also I was thinking about with the, the Muck and the uh, Venusaur, it's first attack poisoned, burn, confused, well if you have the Parasect, and if you have this guy with his ability that keeps them poisoned, you know, I don't know. Storing out there. But then you had to run grass and psychic energy, so. Mm, no, I'm not feeling that. I don't know. Something about, I think eventually he could be good, though. So, but that's it. You got anything else, Dance Bear? Nope. No, I think we covered everything. Uh, let us know uh, if you have a different opinion on what should be number one and give us a reason why you think it's number one or maybe we got right on point this time. Maybe. Maybe. So, um, that's it for Pope Dad and the Dancing Bear. Be excellent to each other. And party on dudes.